Hello there, we are down to our last lesson in our little snippet of inequalities. And we're gonna call that 2B9. So we're still in chapter two, but after this one, we'll finally be done with it. We're moving on to four next. Solving and graphing inequalities, case two. So you might be thinking, hey, we just solved and graphed inequalities and we did a lot. Why do we have to do more? Well, because in case number one, I didn't show you the weird things that can happen and inequalities when negative numbers are involved. We didn't have any examples like the ones we're gonna do today. So this is almost like a special case. Um, you'll get very used to special cases next year, especially in Algebra 1. So one little thing that's kind of strange about inequalities, it's listed out here. If you multiply or divide each side of an inequality by the same negative number, so not add or subtract, if you multiply or divide each side by the same negative number, We've had inequalities that involve negatives, but I didn't give you any where you had to, in order to solve it, multiply or divide by a negative. And I did that on purpose because if you multiply or divide each side of an inequality by the same negative number, the inequality symbol actually has to be reversed or it won't be true anymore. So up here I have six and it looks like the same exact thing, right? Because I'm gonna kind of lead you through, a, I'll have a discussion with you pretending that you're here, I guess. This is true, right? 20 is greater than 10. And so far when we're trying to solve things, we have added the same number to both sides, right? And if I added, and yes, you should write this, two to each side, I would have 22 on this side and 12 on this side. And is 22 still greater than 12? Yeah, so if you add the same number to both sides of an, of an inequality, nothing really changes, right? Okay, underneath that one, um, because we talked about multiplying or dividing negatives, what if we added a negative? Would that make it untrue? If you take 20 plus negative 2, that's 18. And if you take 10 plus negative 2, that's 8. Is 18 still greater than 8? Yeah, so that one's fine, right? That's not a big deal if you do that. Okay, what if you... Let's see here. What if you multiply by a positive number? If you multiply by 2 on each side to solve it, because that's what we were doing when we solved it, right? You add, subtract, multiply, or divide to get that variable by itself. 20 times 2 is 40. 10 times 2 is 20. Is 40 still greater than 20? Yeah, so multiplying the same positive number to each side doesn't change the statement. If you divided each side by a positive 2, 20 divided by 2 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 10 is still greater than 5. So nothing's changed about what you learned before, right? And here I'll show you the examples of when it gets weird. Okay, so I said that if you multiply or divide each side by the same negative number, if you take 20 and you multiply that by a negative 2, whatever you do to one side you do to the other, right? 20 times negative 2 is negative 40. 10 times negative 2 is negative 20. Now this said that this side was greater than that side, right? And you learn if you do the same thing to both sides of an equation, you don't change anything. Is negative 40 greater than negative 20? No. Remember, the higher the negative digit, the lower the value. So when you multiply both sides by a negative, when you go to give your answer, you have to flip your sign. Otherwise, the statement won't be true anymore. The same goes for if you divide by a negative. If you divided both sides by a negative, I know that 20 is greater than 10, and whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. 20 divided by negative 2 is negative 10. 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. Is a negative 10 greater than a negative 5? No. Negative 10 is less than negative 5. The higher the negative digit, the lower the value. So in all the other examples that we just did over here, you saw that if you add or subtract or multiply or divide and you're dealing with multiplication and division of positive numbers and with addition and subtraction, doesn't matter if it's negative, nothing changes. There's nothing strange that happens. But if you have to multiply or divide by a negative, that doesn't mean there's just a negative number in the problem. It means that to solve it, you multiplied something by a negative or divided by a negative. In your final answer, you have to flip the sign. And that's the only time you have to flip the sign. So let's try some of these. All right, for letter A, I have negative 9m is greater than 54. So in this one, 
I would have to divide by negative 9 in order to get m by itself, right? So because I am dividing by a negative, that tells me that once I get this m and I get negative 6, instead of m being greater than, because I divided by this negative 9, I have to switch it to m is less than negative 6. So m would be less than negative 6. Circle your answer and make your graph. Negative 6 is in the center. I have negative 7. I have negative 5. If m is less than negative 6, it can't be negative 6. It can only be less. All right, the next one, I'm going to draw my line. I have negative 4 tenths being multiplied by y, and in order to get that by itself, we know that we have to divide. So I'm going to divide by negative 4 tenths. I'm dividing by negative 4 tenths. So the negative 4 tenths cancels out. I'm left with y. If you take negative 12 and you divide it by negative 4 tenths, I know it's going to seem hard to believe, but you get 30. And you know how you divide it by a negative here? I need to flip this sign around. So instead of it pointing at the y, I'm going to make it greater than like that. Now you can guess that I don't like this, right? Because the variable is on the right-hand side. So I want to rewrite this. I want to rewrite this as y is greater than or equal to 30. It started off pointing at the y. Now it's opened up to the y because I had to divide by a negative when I solved this. So I'm going to go ahead and put 30 in the center, 29, 31. If it's greater than or equal to, that means closed and shaded to the right. Next one, moving along. All right, draw your line. P is being divided by negative 4. To undo that, I need to multiply by negative 4. Here's P. 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. Because you just multiply both sides by a negative, that means that this sign originally that was pointing at the P needs to be opened up to the P. So flip the sign because you multiply by a negative 4 to solve it. I'm going to put negative 28 in the center. To the left would be a negative 29. To the right would be a negative 27. If P is greater than negative 28, that means open because it can't be 20, negative 28. And greater values shade to the right. All right, keep it going. Maybe you want to hit pause and try some on your own and go back and check. That's fine. If not, no biggie. All right, here I have negative 5 is less than or equal to negative x over 5. Remember when you're solving division equations, put the negative with the bottom, and then we can multiply by that negative to get rid of it. So we just had to multiply both sides by a negative. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Originally it was opened up to the x. Now it needs to point at the x because we div sorry, multiplied by a negative to solve it. Rewriting this where the variable is on the left instead, I still want it to point at it. So x is less than or equal to 25. I'm going to draw my line. 25 is in the center, 24, 26. I'm doing the graphs pretty quickly because we've done a lot of graphs. All right. If x is less than or equal to 25, that means closed. Less means left. Next, draw your line. I have negative 2.1c. I need to divide by negative 2.1 in order to get rid of that. And when you take negative 16.8, and you divide it by negative 2.1, you're going to get 8. Because you had to divide by negative 2.1 to solve it, I'm going to flip this sign. It was greater than to start, now it's less than. So there's your solution. Now for the graph, I put the 8 in the center, 7, 8, 9. That reminds me of a joke I heard back in the day. If C is less than 8, that means it can't be 8. It can only be the values that are left. Those of you that have me know the two different versions of that 7, 8, 9 joke. All right, draw your line. Now we've got some two steps going on. So here I need to get rid of adding 2 first, so I'm going to add a negative 2. I'm allowed to add a negative 2 without changing the sign. I just can't multiply or divide by a negative. So that's gone. Negative 3x is left over here. 14 plus negative 2 is 12. To undo multiplying by negative 3, we have to divide by negative 3. So x equals negative 4. And remember, we just divided by a negative. That means instead of greater than, x is going to be less than. So you only flip the sign when you multiply or divide by a negative. So negative 4 is in the center. Negative 5 would be left. Negative 3 would be right. If x is less than negative 4, that means open, because it can't be negative 4. It can only be less. And we're going to shade to the left. All right, three more. Three more. We're almost there. Draw your line. Change signs. This is a two-step. So I need to get rid of this negative 8 first. I'm going to add a positive 8. 
k over 3 is left, 12 plus 8 is 20. I need to now multiply by 3. I get k on one side and 20 times 3 is 60 on the other. Do I have to change the sign? No. I added a positive 8, I multiplied by a positive 3. So just because you learn to change the sign sometimes does not mean that every single one of them you change the sign. You only change the sign when you multiply or divide by a negative. So this symbol would remain the same. K would be less than or equal to 60. So draw my line. I'm going to put 60 in the middle. And I'll do 59 and 61, counting by ones here. If K is less than or equal to 60, it means it can be 60. So close it. And we're shading to the left. Two more. Draw your line. And when I keep change change in a division equation, I always put it with the bottom so I can get rid of the 2 and the negative at the same time. It's great. I want to get rid of this 4 first that's being added to the variable term. To get rid of a 4, I add a negative 4. Again, it's okay to add a negative 4. You don't have to switch anything yet. I'm left with y over negative 2 on this side, and 1 plus negative 4 is negative 3 on this side. Now to get rid of dividing by negative 2, I need to multiply both sides by negative 2. That's right. We just multiply both sides by a negative. So negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. Because I multiplied each side by a negative, I need to switch this greater than to be less than. Draw your number line. 6 goes in the middle. I have 5, 6, 7. If y is less than 6, y can't be 6. It can only be the values that are less. So we shade to the left with an open circle on the 6. And the grand finale. Draw your line. Change your signs. I need to get rid of 16 first because it's on the same side the variable term is on. So I will add a negative 16. And when you take negative 11 plus negative 16, you add the digits normally and keep the sign. So we get negative 27. And on this side I'm left with negative 9n. I need to divide by a negative. So negative 27 divided by negative 9 is 3. n is left over here. And you just divide it by a negative. So I'm going to switch this, the direction of the inequality. And yeah, I'm going to rewrite it again. n is on the left, and if it's pointing at the n up here, I need it to still point at the n. So n is less than or equal to 3. Put the 3 in the center, 2, 3, 4. If n is less than or equal to 3, n can be 3. So I'm going to close that circle and shade it to the left because, yes, left is less. Done with Chapter 2. Woo!